Hi, welcome to my daily broadcast. Um, question for you. You're, I believe you're a smart person. If you're watching my broadcast, I trust you are. Then why is it you've been making some dumb dating choices? And we'll get into what that is, and maybe, you, maybe you're not, but I just want to ask you the question and see if it resonates for you. But before I jump into the whole topic and give you some perspective, let me choose myself first and explain why I do these talks and why you might want to watch. My name is Barry Selby. I am an inspirational speaker, love and relationships expert, and help women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. It's a, um, a topical book about relationships, whether you're single or in a relationship. It's not about sex. There's some of it about sex, but not, you know, you know. that's my book. <laughs> I am a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which informs my work working with women and why I'm so passionate supporting women being the feminine. And also I started these talks, or I should say inspired these talks, starting almost three years ago now, it's right around that time, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. So today we're episode number 843, I think it is. Yeah. And the topic today is basically is um, why smart people make dumb, cho- make dumb dating choices and why it happens and what we can do about it. That's actually not the title, but that's what I'm going to give you. So stay tuned. I <laughs> where do I begin? Yes, where do I begin? Well, first of all, I like to think I'm a smart person, and I'm certainly smarter now than I used to be, and I know my dating choices have improved drastically. I'm much more willing to, to pull the plug early on, and I'd like to think you're the same way. However, there's some things that we do, or I should say things that we think without realizing it, that get in the way of us getting to make better choices. So, excuse me, itchy eye. Okay. This is live and uncut, so this is going to get what's real. And by the way, this is Facebook Live in case you're watching on YouTube. I'll put it on YouTube later on. I'll give you the links at the back end of the broadcast where you can find all the replays in case you want to catch them. So the reason I'm saying why smart people make dumb choices in dating is because, well, first of all, they do. And maybe... I was going to say maybe... No, I'm going to say that. So you're a smart person, and I suspect you may have made some bad dating choices either currently or in the past. If it's currently, you definitely want to stay tuned because I'm going to tell you about why it may be happening and what you can, and then also, and more importantly, what you can do about it so you can change it. We have an abundance of dating opportunities nowadays. If you're a single person, especially, you'll be aware of this with the dating apps, dating sites, and everything else that shows up. And now Facebook's got it launching its dating app as well. And I've already seen people posting about the Facebook dating app, how crazy it is and how... Um, less than desirable it is so far. So I'm not involved in it, I don't have to do with it, and I haven't seen it on my, my profile yet, so I'm not even playing with it. But there's a plethora of choices. That doesn't make things easier, it makes things harder, because it makes it more abundant in your choices and doesn't make it easier to make the right choice. The thing is that we tend to make bad choices, or should say we make dumb choices, because we're drawn to things that aren't lined up for what we want. Now, there's two things going on here. One of which is, I would say we hope for the best, which is not always a smart move. It's nice to hold a positive vision, let me be clear about that, and really hold a positive intention. But oftentimes we, we paint the picture of somebody that isn't accurate, so we don't see them as they really are. So we paint an illusion over the top of the real person. So that's one thing we do that's not working. The second thing we do is we get drawn in um, without realizing what's drawing us in. See, this is one of the biggest challenges in a relationship, is we sometimes go, I'm really attracted to this person. I don't know why. Have you ever said that? I know people, plenty, plenty of people have, and I have myself. The reason why we don't know why we're drawn to them is because what's drawing us in is not something we're aware of. It's going to sound pretty obvious, I know. Our dating choices are mostly operated from a level below our awareness of what we're thinking about. So when you're drawn to somebody, you're not sure why they're attracted to them. It's because you're not even present to it, because it's not in your conscious mind. This is one of the things we don't talk about in the dating arena. Matchmakers don't talk about this. Other coaches don't talk about it. I do because I'm fed up with not talking about it. But I want to speak, I've, I've talked about it several times in my broadcast, by the way. So this is not new information, but I'm reframing it in a way that may land more effectively for you. I trust you're looking to have an amazing relationship. You want to have the most amazing partnership, great things happening, perfect alignment, all the different things you hold true for yourself. If it ain't showing up for you, this may be why. Again, First of all, you paint an, an, a delusional and illusional picture 
of what the person's really about. You don't know what they're up to, what their drive is, what's really going on, but you hope for the best, but you don't plan for the worst, and that can get you in trouble. So let me go down that avenue first, and I'll go back to the other one in a minute. So you have this idea about somebody you've met. Maybe you saw pictures on the dating apps, and I've become, I've become very aware recently that if I was going to build a dating app, I would require the profile picture to be a video with them talking about themselves. Yes. Your, dating, your profile picture in your dating app will be you talking about yourself and talking to the camera, like a Facebook Live. I've had, I have enough practice now where I love this format because it tends to take away all the illusions. There are, if you, I mean, <laughs> I gotta be nice, I gotta be nice. <laughs> The number of people's pictures I've seen on Facebook and on Insta well, not on Instagram, but I got booted off a year ago, so that's all of the story. But on other platforms and on the dating apps, and I'm looking at the women particularly because that's my preference, the number of pictures that appear to be overtly made up or overtly glamorized, that's maybe better, glamorized, glamorous, made glamorous, something like that, is multitudinous there's so many of them so already i'm not seeing the real person secondly the pictures on profile pictures are usually pretty small so you don't really get a good sense of the person some of those pictures if they're not if they're not shot well or accurately or the right angles or other things somebody's face can look nothing like who they really are whereas video tends to give you a better in, in impression of who somebody is they're they're a um let's see they're a moving target no they're <laughs> they're a more um, overt expression of what's possible. Because the thing is, is when you look at somebody's profile picture, it's very limited. Actually, I'm going to talk to a friend of mine. It's a friend of mine. Hey, Nancy. Well, thanks for the love. Um, the dating arenas are not designed for you to get a really good picture of who the person is. Five o'clock like clockwork. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know my broadcast commitment. So I was just talking about, I'll just, I'm, let me just recap for a second so you can catch up with the talk since you just jumped in and you're, in, you're commenting. There's two main reasons why smart people, smart people make dumb dating choices. The one I'm talking about right now, the first one, is making presumptions about the person you're dating which are not accurate. So you make them more than they really are or you presume things about them that aren't true because you're hoping for the best. And again, you're not planning for the worst. And frankly, for a lot of people, they are actually going to experience the worst because what they're looking for isn't matching what they think they found discrepancy there so again profile pictures oftentimes are not accurate that's what I said as I said I'm going to talk to Tina about this as you as you know Tina's doing her dating app or dating site is I think everybody's profile picture on a dating app or dating site should be a video not a picture because you can get to know a person better by watching them talk and seeing their face move get yeah, not <laughs> not which what, what do you respond to there Nancy I'm not sure which one you say not to so let me continue on with this one 90% oh yes <laughs> Indeed. So the, the point I want to make is when you're on the dating apps and dating sites, don't get um, um, good picks right. Yes, exactly. Not good picks. Thank you. Is that what I'm saying there? Well, I'm saying for the women, it's the same thing. It's like women are made up. You put a video on yours. Nice one, Nancy. Smart woman. Smart woman. Because it's more real. It's more accurate. It's more, it's more telling of who you are. There was thought, no, that's going away. Okay, so back to, back to the message at hand. So first of all, let me finish off this point. It's just, it's just you, meaning your videos of you. I trust it is, oh, it's just you a on a trained band. That's pretty, that's pretty, um, what's we're looking for? It's pretty spectacular to do that. On a train in Japan, that's pretty special. It's, that definitely is kind of a highfalutin thing to do versus just saying you're on a train like, you know, in Portland. <laughs> um, anyway, let me get back on track to this message. I'm tending to complete here. Is when you're looking at people's profiles, see them as they really are. If it doesn't say that they are aligned to your message, be willing to find out, but don't make assumptions about them. The thing about most people when they go dating, they don't date reality, they date a fantasy. So if they're looking at a dating app, excuse me, dating profile, they're going to see things that aren't there or not see things that are there. I've done it myself. I've been on dates and then realized what I saw on the profile. I ignored that. And then when I'm out of them, it's like, oh shit, literally. Oh crap. Not, no, I mean, that's what I said, not what I did. <laughs> Just to be clear, it wasn't what I wanted. So that's one piece is not getting realistic profile information and not seeing their profile realistically or in reality. That's one thing. The second piece I mentioned 
is that we don't know what's drawing us in. As I said, we get this, this feeling when we get drawn to somebody, we don't know why. And again, the reason you don't know why is because your conscious mind doesn't have a clue why you're being drawn to them. But your subconscious mind knows all about it. And this is the thing I've talked about quite a few times before because it's such a visceral piece that we forget about dating. Is until we um, resolve, isn't the right word? Until we heal and transform our relationship with our younger self, our younger self is going to keep choosing dates for us that don't match what we want. I'll say it again, because this is the key. Until we make peace with and resolve and have a new relationship with our younger self, we're still going to get dates chosen by our younger self that don't match what we want as an adult. And just like you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have yourself as a five-year-old driving the car you're in, heaven forbid, you wouldn't want to have your five-year-old self making date choices for a partner that you don't have any control over. But that's what's happening when you're in drawn in next to somebody and you don't know why. It's the subconscious mind going, oh, that fits. Now, <laughs> that fits statement, what it fits, is a belief about relationships that a five-year-old still believes. And if you're like most people, at five years old, your experience of love and relationships was only what you saw by, modeled by your parents. And for some of you going, oh crap. Because if you're looking at your five-year-old's perspective of your parents, you may have done a lot of work as an adult and look back and go, it's a different relationship. But as a five-year-old looking up at your parents, the perspective you have on their relationship wasn't one where you judged it, good or bad. You just saw it as it was and went, that's the way love is expressed. The way your parents treated each other, the way your parents even treated you, will become the unwritten, or should say the unaware, written rules in your subconscious about how love is expressed and how relationships work. And if your parents' relationship wasn't great when you're five years old, this may be why your adult choices aren't working for you either. That five-year-old consciousness, roughly, I mean, it's give or take two or three years based on Bruce Lipton's book, um, The Biology of Belief. He talks about that young and formative time. So scientific research on this. I'm not making this up. This is real stuff. As an adult, you may be thinking you can make the right choice dating-wise. Unfortunately, you don't get to choose that. Your five-year-old does. That five-year-old awareness that is still inside, it doesn't go away. Your inner child lives within you. It's part of who you are. It's your, part of your makeup. Your whole, your whole from zero to where you are now is awareness, is consciousness, is who you are. You don't just live as an, an adult person, unless you have some sort of amnesia or something. Anyway, that's a different topic. I don't know anything about that. I'm not going to go there. So the thing about it is, is that that part of you, which is the younger part, has been around a lot longer than the adult part of you. This is how I want to make sure you get this point, a different way of saying it. So if you're, say, 40 years old, as a ballpark number. That means your five-year-old has been around with you for 35 years. Or if you're older, keep adding. Or younger, so take away. Meaning that you may have been a 40-year-old for one year, but your five-year-old consciousness has been doing its thing for 35 years. Just think how much investment that is. Think how much energy that is. It's not, it's not really working like that, but that's the analogy I want to give you because it's really the subconscious mind is so much more um, dug in and so much more programmed to do things a certain way the conscious mind doesn't have full um, governance over so when you're in your um, dating explorations going through dating apps dating sites etc etc you may be saying oh I'm interested in that person but again as I said you may find yourself being attracted and you don't know why your five year old does know why that young part of yourself is still choosing relationships because of what, it, what he or she learned at the, f at the knees of her parents, so to speak. Because your parents model for you what love and relationship should be. And however good or bad that is, is how you're choosing relationships as an adult. That's why a lot of people go around going, you know, they feel like they married their parents. It's true, because their younger self is choosing somebody that matches the energy of their parents. So that's why it works that way. The good news is, you're not, you're not doomed to this forever. <laughs> I hope that gives you some, some hope. But the thing is, what it does require is to do some inner investigation, to do some, um, I don't know, I was going to say forensic, but that sounds too, too um, traumatic, I don't mean that, but it means looking back at your own life. And first, it means getting clear about what your childhood was like. For some people, their childhood has been blurred out and suppressed because the conscious mind doesn't want to deal with it. Even more vital that you do face this in a safe environment with safe support. So you can actually come back to a place where you can basically, in a way, adopt your own five-year-old to reacquaint yourself with your five-year-old mind memories and to realign the belief system so your five-year-old choices are no longer running the show. By changing that from 
then to now, you can actually reintegrate both your five-year-old consciousness and your present consciousness and bring yourself into a choice point where you can align all your energy of where you really want to go. So you see with clear eyes, so you don't go through fooling yourself what you're looking for, and you have an alignment energetically with your subconscious mind, which is your five-year-old, so you can get where you want to go. It sounds simplistic, I know, but I'm attempting to give you in you know a 10-15 minute broadcast what can take a couple of months to work through. That's why I work with, work with my clients is usually three months to six months coaching because we've got to go deep and do some transformational work. This is worthwhile if you want to transform your relationship experience. Now, if your relationship, date, if your dating life has been working fine and everything's going great, first of all, if you're not married and you're not getting what you want, is that really true? Secondly, if you're not even wanting to go date because you're having such bad experiences, this will give you some hope that you can transform your experience so you can be confident enough and trusting enough to date once again. Part of my work is also helping clients get clear on what they want to attract and draw in so they have a clearer vision, but it's the, under, the work below that in the younger, the older, younger, older, the previous ages that has to come into alignment so the vision and the, and the, and the intention come together. So I'm going to put a couple of links in the comments and reminders to you because one of these things is if you don't know what's going on with your own dating life, let's have a chat. So I actually literally have a link in there, which is barryselby.com forward slash chat, which is a complimentary chat with me. So we can talk, give you some guidance, some clarity, and some recommendations. And if it works out, there's a lineup, we can see if we want to work together. No pressure, just an invitation. So that's going to be in the comments for, for one thing. The second thing is, and this is, this is my reminder to you, I keep giving it to you and reminding you of this, is the only way to really become in a place where you can attract the love you want is to start by loving yourself. When you start loving yourself truly internally, part of the healing happens when you start loving yourself because I said yesterday, the whole talk about this yesterday, yes, yeah, yesterday, about he, loving is the application, sorry, healing is the application of loving to the parts inside that hurt. When you start loving yourself, it transforms your experience. So I'll put a link in the comments for my guided meditation on self-love because it'll help you get in a better place with yourself so you can actually go deeper more easily and have a, it's almost like putting on a a safety harness you can go into deeper places in your consciousness with safety and with love and with compassion it's the best way through self-love is the way through to helping you with forgiveness for healing your past wounds and for getting where you want to go i'm adamant about this i've learned this stuff over the last 25 30 years i study this stuff i teach this stuff i help you with this you can resolve your own life and get what you want as you may have guessed i'm kind of adamant about this so i hope this has made sense to you it's a simple thing in a way but it's more transformational when you do the work and my work is transformational because it's changing your paradigm of what you believe to what you really want to have. But you've got to be willing to go for it. So this video may help you, but if you don't follow up with me and, and click on one of the links, I can't promise it's going to make a difference for you. Because just knowing this, as I said before, your conscious mind may think it knows what's going on, but it's a subconscious mind driving the ship. If you take this in and you go, yeah, I understand this now, but you don't do the work on the subconscious level, nothing much is going to change. Sorry. I'd like to think my five, 10 minute talks can change your life. <laughs> Maybe they will at some point, but right now this is just simply clues about what's in the way and giving you keys of what to do next. So again, I'll put links in the comments. You can check out what to do to help work with me. Again, barrysilver.com forward slash chat is the link to talk to me. barrysilver.com forward slash self love is the self love the guided meditation that I recorded for you, actually two meditations that help you get more in love with yourself than you've ever been before. I think I made my point. If you have any questions, thoughts about this topic, I do invite you to put them below in the comments. I'll respond when I sign off. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, they both work. Again, links will be in the comments after I sign off. Um, this is my daily Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page that Nancy was kind enough to remind me or confirm that I do that. Thank you, Nancy. Um, the replays go to my oh, personal page is Barry Selby on Facebook. My, personal, my business page on Facebook is barryselby.author where the replays live. You can like my page and follow me there. And you can also go to my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Also, it's, it's youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby. There is a channel on there called Messages. Excuse me, that's my channel. Please subscribe. There's a playlist on there, get the right words around, called Messages from the Masculine. So you can find them all there. If you're stuck in the area of relationship, you want some support and guidance, I'm here to help. I have a lot of programs, guidance, coaching, support to help you get where you want to go. You've got to take the first step and reach out. That's why I keep inviting you to reach out. So from that, I'll leave you to it. You can go play and have a fun evening. I'm going to head out for a reunion party for my alumni because we're having some uh, gathering at a house that uh, we used to party at all the time as adults, not as kids. And uh, for, with that, I thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me as always. I invite you to take care of yourself. Please take care of yourself. And I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. With that, I thank you for watching. 
I will see you tomorrow. Take care of yourself. Bye.